So I'm John L. Simpson. I'm from the online publication Frame Rated uh, here in the UK. Uh, I'm obviously I'm joined today with uh, writer, director, and editor uh, Adam Raymeyer. Oh, oh, did, did I get sure. that right? Okay. Yes, you did. Uh, and joining a thousand, bro. You're batting a thousand. <laughs> also, uh, joining Adam is the lead, uh, leads, should I say, uh, Kyle Gallner. Yes, Gallner, yeah. yeah. Right. Okay, thank you. Well and, done, uh, well done. Miss Emma Eggs. This, oh, yeah. this, <laughs> this interview is complete. Uh, first of all, thanks for taking the time to uh, speak to me today. And uh, yeah. congratulations on the release of Dinner in America. Uh, I'm a massive fan of it, and it's been on my radar since it premiered in Sundance last year. Um, so, yeah, I'm really excited. It's finally available here in the UK, courtesy of Arrow. Yeah. Uh, so, oh, yeah, yeah, a massive thank you and congratulations to every one of you, uh, everyone involved. Yeah. Yeah. So, Arrow, Arrow did a great Thanks. job. It's a great release, and they, just, uh, they were top-notch to work with. So nothing but nice things to say. Oh, awesome. Uh, Adam, first question is uh, to you. Uh, after shocking many critics with your first film, The Bunny Game, uh -huh. how does it feel to be at the complete opposite end now and be receiving such positivity? Well, that's a strange question too, because uh, you know, despite despite the negativity of let's just say like the BBFC and like David Cook, that type of thing, there were so many reviews that were so just like the ones we get for this that were so in-depth and so personal i mean there was actually quite a few dissertations written about the film from anywhere from wales and uk and different places in the uk that uh it was just crazy uh so it was a different film but i guess with that particular film you know i was working with an actress that had had been abducted in real life uh -huh. and so this was like a cathartic process for her so it was an artistic statement and a collaboration between the two of us and i don't i don't regret doing that or doing any anything having to do with it it was like for for me it was a chance to work with her in a really just creative artistic way and uh so yeah i mean this is a totally different experience but the approach to it and the approach that I have like to working with people is exactly the same. So for me, it, there's not, you know, like it was definitely a more polarized, you know, polarizing film than Dinner in America, but sure. but the energy that went into it, it's the same. It's yeah. the same. Again, uh, this is to Adam. Uh, what um, On the director's commentary, you mentioned the script caught the eye of the late director, Danny Liner. Uh, journey to the edges, and he's also credited as a producer. Uh, how instrumental was he in refining the screenplay and shaping your vision? Danny, Danny was so early on in the process when I first optioned the material to uh, Ross Putman, Dave Hunter, and Danny Liner at the time. Um, this is a this is a few years before Danny got sick. He uh, he passed away from cancer like right after we shot the film. So. He was not on set, but, you know, like he was there in spirit and he was there in an early phase wow. when we were trying to develop and put the film together. Uh, yeah. So he was he was instrumental in the, at the head of it. Um, yeah. And then, uh, you know, uh, he passed away like right after we shot it. Uh, since you mentioned uh, the early process of it. Uh, what challenges did you face uh, getting the film made? Did the backing of Ben Stiller's production company help overcome several issues? Um, this film was straight pain to put together for many, many years. It had many configurations uh, before we landed on the film that we ended up shooting. It had fallen apart a couple times. It had, so um, it, it, it was a pain to make the whole time and it was hard to get anybody to uh to really help with it so um we made it for what we did we ended up just doing it for what we could and i'm very you know obviously very happy with um every everything about it you know um so kyle uh, this is to you yeah. um simon is such a multi-layered character and completely different from your previous roles uh, mm. Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, Jennifer's Body, just to pick 
pick a few. Uh, what was your initial reaction when you first read the script? Could you see a younger version of yourself in Simon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's kind of it's kind of funny, you know. I think think back on a lot of the stuff that I've 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 played, and Simon in a lot of ways is actually probably closer to me than a lot of the things that I have actually played. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I definitely had like I was a wild child I definitely had like a you know bit of a temper as a kid and and I used, you know I grew up listening to punk and hardcore music and going to shows and things like that so this is you know it's it's a world Simon's world is a world that I'm not unfamiliar with you know but at the same time there are there are pretty significant differences like I was never as like aggro or or you know as as super in your face as Simon was um so, yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely things that I understand. And then there were definitely things that I had to figure out <laughs> um, when, you know, breaking down the, the script and, and creating the character. He's, he stole the paper towels again. Um, <laughs> Puppies. Yeah, he's a maniac. But um, yeah, no, I, I, I love Simon. I think Simon's incredibly... I think he's 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 a really interesting character i mean you don't you don't get sent characters like this that often you know where where you get such a complete arc i mean he he starts off one way like he, you know you're almost like challenging the audience by being like this guy is you know he is who he is and then by the end you you really are along for the ride with with patty and simon you know you get this incredibly you know aggro punk rock guy that you 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 really feel one way about in the beginning and then you start to realize like he is a really strong moral compass you know he's got things he stands for he's got things he believes in you know he sticks up for the people that he you know he loves or cares about or even you know i think simon would straight up stick up for a stranger if he thought you know it wasn't you know things weren't right so i don't know i really enjoyed playing simon he's 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 really complex dude that it's kind of like a one in a million opportunity i think the scene where uh he gets beat up by the bullies really encapsulates him as a person because he's willing to stick up for patty yeah and he's willing yeah. to take it on the chin for, for yeah oh 100 percent. Uh, oh yeah no 100 percent. i definitely don't think that's the first time that's happened <laughs> <laughs> uh, you mentioned that he was an interesting character but I think, Emily, this is for you. Uh, Patty is such a unique character and one that's <laughs> often positively represented in cinema. From being bullied on the bus to finding a cathartic outlet in music, I think everyone can relate to her, uh, especially mm. music fans. Uh, when you received the script, what initially attracted you to her, her as a character? I think, oh, so it's funny. When I first read the script, I was confused. I was like, how would I ever do this? And then I think I realized that so much of who Patty is is who I was <laughs> growing up. And I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how, how do I conform to fit the better mold that society wants me to be in. And in making this movie, I was kind of able to go back to who I was at that time and have a cathartic experience in the same way that Adam had in, with the bunny games um, to kind of like relive that part of my life and recognize that that person who I was has a lot of value, like Patty learns and how Patty finds her value. So for me, it was really personal and I was kind of scared shitless when the movie was coming out. Cause I was like, this is me. <laughs> this is like me at my core and times 20, completely exaggerated of course. But I was like, what are people gonna think of who I am? What's my dad gonna think watching this? Fuck them, <laughs> like, fuck them all, fuck them all. Right, up. right. And I think I've gained a lot of confidence and clarity and also a lot of uh, empathy for people. I think like at the end of the day, the core of the movie is like, you just don't know who someone is until yeah. you do. And you just can't, um, there's no point in making a prejudgment of who somebody is. You, you oh, just, yeah. people, people are very complex. I think there's a bit um, of body in everyone. 
Yay. That's, there is for me. There's definitely for me. Like people ask me, are you, are you like assigning you? It's like, no, they're 50, 50. They really are. Yeah. I definitely think people yeah. have a bit of Simon, a bit of Patty, you know, I think there's a combo or, you know, they lean one way or the other, but I, I do think that's really what a lot of people, I think that's why people really attach themselves to these two characters. I think a lot of people see a bit of themselves in one or both of them, yeah. you know, whether it's, it's like that, you know, fuck you push back against the like aggro shit. But si like everybody wishes they could walk into a, some place and tell somebody, a cat cat fuck. Place. you know a what I mean? Like, like you know, like, and at the same time, yeah. form of, you know, another form of uh, uh, yeah. identification. Fuck you. Yeah, yeah. But then at the same time, it's like you know, it was amazing how many, how many times like at screenings and stuff people would raise their hands and be like that was me on the bus every day getting shit on every single day you know and yeah. I, I i just i think people really recognize a piece of themselves in these two and i think that's why people have you know the movies resonated with people the way it has yeah yeah definitely yeah um like the two characters are completely polar opposites but the chemistry between you both is almost palpable off on the from from the screen um how did you both prepare for the role what was the process <laughs> <laughs> well they booked our flights so that we were sitting in, right next to each other on our on our way from LA to Detroit <laughs> yeah so that was really great we kind of got to be in the airport together and Kyle you you had a funny story about the flight or the lady at the check at the desk at the airport Oh. sorry you just like we both I think started like <laughs> figuring out how do we embody like who are these people and like we had the opportunity to kind of test it out in real life scenarios like yeah. Kyle and I would go to like this candle shop in Detroit and like go candle shopping and just that's such a weird thing to do with a co-star but that really that those kinds of experiences like really brought us we, together like we, we were just like really... living together yeah, we were really pretty kind of inseparable for that beginning 10 days. I mean, I, I look back sometimes, I'll go through my photos and stuff. I'm like, there's like photos, like, you know, Emily would come over and we would cook dinner and we would just sit down and hang out and talk or we would all go out like me, Emily and Adam and we would get food and there was a lot of weird stuff. I mean, there was a lot of, you know, experiences like it, it was like, you know, pumps with pumpkin you know we went through all that with that with the you know we rescued a pit bull while we were there we rescued this beautiful dog and there was like all these like crazy sort of bonding thing like it was it was such but a wild were... time <laughs> like it was like really. summer camp it was totally it was like, like summer, summer camp. camp but it got set up by adam in that way like yeah, adam right adam picked us up from the airport like yeah we and went took out us and right to a diner to go eat and then patty melts we ate patty, patty melts. melts i still have that picture of me and you <laughs> um, when we went out a couple days after too this is i don't I never let live this shit down but when we went out oh, is this, the later, chicken? <laughs> this is chicken wing shit so we all, we all ordered a big thing of chicken wings and we were all sharing the wings like an appetizer type of deal and, uh, you know, we were at some place with a lot of like business professionals and shit. So we kind of, we kind of, you know, stood out a little bit. We were in there. It was like an outdoor kind of thing. And we're eating this stuff. And like, let me, let me tell you, Jonathan, I, you know, I grew up in Nebraska, rural environment. Like I, I clean my, I clean my chicken bone pretty, pretty properly, like, you know, proper, you know, it's, there's nothing left on it. Seemingly nothing left. This guy, Kyle, He's like, it's not good enough for him. My bones are not good enough for him. He pulls my bones and starts gnawing off the cartilage and all the shit on the internet. <laughs> it's, like, it's like he's already trying to like emasculate me in front of Emily, you know? <laughs> he's just sitting there. Kyle's just like, yeah, he was in. He was in. <laughs> it was like full Simon, like by day three. Hey, goddamn animal. You gotta go. You gotta go. I'm gonna eat the giraffe oh, and chicken bone in front of them, like as if that I hadn't done a good enough job. You know, felt very, very small. <laughs> felt very small. We also Trying wrote the it. music like first thing when we got there, so it, that really kind of set us up. That's, oh, that's yeah. the day we got there. See, at the time, you see, like eleven o'clock at night or so. 
10 or 11. Yeah. That's the day we got there. And he took us out right A lot of this right shit's out. coming back up in my feed, you know, like you have memories or you have this or that, yeah. you know? Thanks for reminding me I have memories. Uh, Adam, you mentioned integrating the uh, a DIY ethic of your musical experience into the film. As a small budget production, how essential was this to the process of filmmaking? You know, for, for me, um, uh, it's, maybe this production almost had too large of a footprint because it, you know, while it was nimble, it was also slower than I'm used to. I'm like very immediate with things. So, you know, there's a little bit of balancing that, but I mean, we're still an independent film and it's still small. So I would say that that was, that was slight, but it's just more about being really direct and like knowing what you want and getting it because you don't have a lot of time. So my background is in low budget, micro budget and documentary. So I make decisions super fast. And, but I also come to the table with those things predetermined. I'm not sitting there wasting a bunch of time trying to figure things out. So, you know, like I treat it, I treat a production like we have this amount of time and we have to just have to get it done. So you just have to plow through and get it done. I remember on the first day I wanted to show them what it was going to be like you know working with me and we did our first scene together in the alleyway where the where simon and patty meet yeah we had a stressful day there was some situation with a crew member and stuff that uh his father actually passed away and so we we had like a whole kind of like a disruption but we needed to like it needed to be something where we just all came together and, and made it happen. But I think it was on the first take, uh, they, did a, they did a wide shot together where they come in the, the alley and they meet. I knew in my head that I was never gonna use that shot, but they didn't know that. So we just did like one take of it. And I was like, all right, cut, let's move on. And they were like, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's wait, I, I wanna do a different, I got like, no, we don't have time, let's move on. And so that set, you know, psychologically, you know, that's a, that's a sigh out there. That's the, <laughs> you're setting, you're setting what it's going to be like that there may not be another chance. And that, you know, I think for actors, it lets them know like, okay, this, this person's going to move, they're going to move with stuff and we got to fucking get it. And I mean, they're, they're so, they were so game and so in all the time. The only reason I would ever really go back for anything truly was like t for technical reasons, not as much performative because they would give me a couple options with things and they're really good options to have they understand that and like how to how to massage that for the edit um intuitively i don't know if it's conscious or intuitive but they do that well so i never had to worry about either of them it was more like i like i was it was not even this interview it's an interview i was talking about logistics that is the shit that i don't like because i could if i could just play with kyle and emily all day i would just play with kyle and emily all day but most of the time things get bogged down when you're making a film because of just logistics of going from place to place. And Dinner in America had like 65 plus locations. So, Amazing. you know, do the math in a, in a 25 day shoot. You know, how many characters, man. speaking roles? How many Se speaking 70, roles? 70 speaking roles or so. Which so for indie, in indie film is absolutely like bananas. Yeah. yeah. Bonkers. This is, so we're moving one or two, three locations a day. It's just going boom, boom, boom. Except the only stable thing was Patty's house. And that was, we were like a week at the house. So that was the only stable thing that we had going on in the uh, production. Sorry, I'm just bringing this back up because uh, Emily, you, you mentioned it a second ago. Uh, the music serves as like the beating heart of the story of the characters. Uh, I read in an interview with uh, your DP, uh, Jean-Philippe, that he took Kyle to several punk shows during the pre-production? Yeah, so it wasn't even pre-production. What happened was, this is actually how I ended up on the movie. So oh, I, I did, um, Adam sent me, Adam sent me the script, or I got, I got sent the Dinner in America script like four or five years, something like that, right? Three, like, three years. Three, three years. years before I actually signed on to do it. I was in the middle of a TV show. It was like hectic. I had new babies and I read like the first 10 pages and then something happened and I, I never ended up reading it. Yeah. Um, cut to years later, I'm making 
another this this other movie and jp that is is shooting it and he was like yeah this movie i was supposed to do kind of fell apart you would actually be really good for it and he told me the name of it and i was like that name sounds super super familiar and i typed in name of it into my email and i actually still had the original email with the script and so i read the script and was like holy shit this thing's crazy like this is amazing and i set up a meeting with adam and luckily adam still wanted was down for me to do it and we talked for a couple hours and <laughs> uh we finally signed uh, you know i finally we, we got it together i did it and then um that was all before the movie me and jp finished uh, or the movie me and jp were doing finished and so the dead kennedys were playing in um romania okay. yeah so we went and saw the uh we went and saw the dead kennedys together while we were out there and that was that was super fun we went and saw disco assault play uh who wrote the who wrote the psyops music we saw them play in detroit yeah um that was super fun and they invited uh, kyle up on the stage yeah i did a team. song i did one song <laughs> with them, which was really fun um they introduced him as they were like this is your friend Sy simon from psyops <laughs> and kyle fucking killed it you were so great and it was, it was so fun. cool to be able to watch that and it was in like an old abandoned bank in detroit that yeah. They were running the power off a generator. Like it was so punk. It was so fucking cool. Yeah. And then really afterwards, people were coming up to Kyle and saying, Psyops, yeah, I think I've heard of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it was so great. As it a, was cool. As a fan of music, that must have been like a dream come true. Being oh my God, man. I've always I've always wanted to front like a punk type bit you know what i mean yelling to a microphone get up on stage like it's something i've always wanted to do so to be able to actually do it was like <laughs> and i will know, say you knocked fun. it out of the park it looked great when we finally get to the punk you know it's like that was the thing with this film it's like you can't go all the way and then get to the fucking punk show and the kids a poser in some way it's like that's gonna suck so it had to be authentic disco assault was a huge part of that and you know just making the right hires for it and they were and it, their singer matt was just fucking awesome and able to i mean yeah. kyle, kyle and him just it was instant like the, the 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 music we did that all like it was in two sessions because kyle blew his voice out on the first one but uh you know it was it came together really seamless and it was great it was great it also helped that jp is like a total hardcore kid too so jp spent a lot of time filming hardcore shows and and punk shows and stuff like that so he was able to really capture that vibe like when we when we finally got into the pit and got into everything like he was able to really get that kind of feeling going will, will the soundtrack ever be released on a music streaming platform or the vinyl yeah it will we're working on it it's you know the pandemic slowed mm -hmm. everything down and fucked it all so yeah that at some Stay point tuned. I think uh, I yes. Always... The answer is yes. I I want that more than anything. You know, like I can just I can visualize it in my head. So something sexy for you. Oh, okay? Something. Else that. Else hey, sexy. sorry. One sec. <laughs> is he okay? Come on. What's happening? What's happening? Chaos. This is, is for it... all of you. But uh, oh, okay. both both Patty and Simon learn from each something from each other, and they have all these mm. people. Uh, I'm curious what each of you learned while she was making the film about yourself. Mm. I learned to love every little weird part of myself and every el everybody else's little weird part of themselves and to see value in everything, even if society doesn't think. Yeah. I think... Great. I'm sorry. <laughs> My I dog is going to kill this guy that came up the driveway. I got to go talk to him real quick. I'm really, really sorry, Jonathan. Oh, very, sorry. very nice. Very, very nice to meet you, brother. Um, I got to go handle this real fast. <laughs> you went in. All right, the next one. Um, I learned that uh, I was pretty fucking jaded, you know, about things. And uh, I think that Kyle and Emily, um, especially this relationship between Patty and Simon, opened me up to a lot of things and it was really more it, it, it's it's a crossover because I really believe that Emily is Patty and I really believe that Kyle is Simon like I believe those things about like I don't believe that there's just it's just an act and it's all all of that I mean 
to a degree, sure, but they put enough of themselves in it. And I just feel that that, that creation that we all felt was, opened me up in a way that was like just super positive for myself, like wanting to go and to, to stay on track and go deeper and deeper with everything that I do. And the experience of working with them, like was, that was the, the point where I was just like, wow, you know, it can go, this is how far it can go. I just think with the music and the way that we connected with it all, it, it was just, uh, it was just it's keeping me on track emotionally, like for what I want, the kind of work that I want to do. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, just to wrap things up uh, again, Thank you for answering my questions today. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys later. Thank you. Thanks for having right. us, Jono. Thanks, Jonathan. Bye. Bye. Take care, brother.